Um, so I'm going to start introducing our next speaker in the interest of time. Since it's a lightning talk, I don't want to um, shorten your time. So Amit joins us from Comcast today. Amit has been at Comcast for over six years and has helped launch many, many mobile and web applications there. Amit is going to talk about how Comcast balances test quality and release velocity today. So, Amit? Thank you. It's incredible how Sonal can remember the snippet of information that everybody has put forward and not use a paper. It's amazing. So my name is Amit Isa. I come from a small cable company from the East Coast. Some of you might have heard of it. Yeah, yeah very good. Um, Ankit's presentation from yesterday, uh, how to move really fast and not break anything, could very f well fit into my presentation. But my presentation is only 15 minutes long, so I'm going to call it Maintaining Sanity in a Hypermedia World. And in this talk, since it's uh, the Google Test Automation Conference, I'll be focusing on the sanity aspect of this. So 2013, the product team approached us and said, this is the vision that we have for new customers. Uh, by the end of 2013, we're going to have the X1 Entertainment Operating System. We're going to make TV shows uh, available as live stream. Let me see. Um, movies and TV shows and live uh, TV will be made available on, on uh, set-up boxes and mobile apps and websites. Uh, your recordings and video on demand would all be made available across all these platforms. And this is what I saw. I saw a spider web of APIs. Each of those nodes are pages, hypermedia pages, and each of those lines are links to other pages. Um, and uh, this is only a fraction of the API that we have built so far. But we, are on, we were on a good um, roll right away because um, hypermedia API was what we were going to start using. And this is a quick snapshot of what a hypermedia API looks like. External services talk to the middleware, and we have built uh, a hypermedia API layer on top of it so that the same API is called by every single one of these clients. As you can see, Android, iOS, uh, the web, and set -up box. So the same experience uh, is made available to all these uh, different devices using the same API. Another version of uh, the same hypermedia um, uh, information that I'm putting forward to you, a simple version of it, a client calls the home page. And the home page, in turn, calls a bunch of resources through links. So this is basically what a hypermedia uh, API looks like. We'll dig into what it means to maintain sanity. So how do you maintain sanity in a hypermedia world? Feedback, 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 and extensive testing. So the first thing we put in place is a code repo, and we decided to use Git. We made sure that we had extensive code review, and we used a tool called Garrett. And I'm sure a lot of you already use this. We uh, also put in place a continuous testing infrastructure with uh, a you know, commercial tool. And we were successful enough to put together a whole bunch of uh, functional and unit test scripts. And we are proud to say in about a year and a half, uh, as of yes, uh, last week, uh, we have over nine uh, 900 functional tests and close to 9,000 unit tests. And the code coverage is over 90%. In fact, we have uh, set it up in Garrett in such a way that as soon as the code coverage goes below, uh, test coverage of the code goes below 90%, the Garrett um, immediately fails the build, and the developer has to add more test cases. So that helps us maintain a high level of test coverage. And uh, continuous deployment, again, is being used by the same tool. And continuous deployment happens every day, every day as in every weekday. And, um, We've been very successful in putting together this uh, continuous testing infrastructure. So in order to explain this part of my presentation, let's take like two developer names and two uh, SDET names. So do two developer names. How about Larry and Sergey? <laughs> totally random, totally random. And an SDET name, how about Eric? OK? So Larry uh, and Sergey decides, uh, OK, we're going to um, build out this new feature in, this, in the mobile app. 
And Larry decides, okay, I know how to do it. He starts uh, putting in the code. He checks in his uh, code into Garrett, and a whole bunch of uh, the unit and uh, functional test script starts running. Two of them fail. So he goes back and fixes, those, uh, fixes the code, adds more test cases, and checks it into Garrett again. And now all the test cases pass. Code looks good, great. It goes into code review. And Sergey has something to say. He starts adding um, a bunch of comments and tells Larry basically there is a better way to go about doing this. And so Larry has to go back to writing more code, writing more test cases, and then checks it into Garrett. Verifies that all the test cases pass, and it goes into code review stage. And this time, Eric says, oh, what about these few test cases that I think should be added? And they, decide, they discuss and say, yeah, you're right. So he goes back to the code review. Um, it goes back to writing code, does more code review, running the test cases through Git and Garrett, um, more code review with the larger group. And finally, it is merged uh, into the trunk. So that is how the continuous testing pipeline works. Uh, it's a little slower than what we used to do before, but it's a much higher reliable way of um, writing code and testing. And all the engineers become experts in the code. There's no specialist. Everybody are generalists. So this is a daily deployment uh, pipeline. The developer writes uh, new code on his local machine. The test cases are also on his local machine. He runs it. Uh, he checks his code into Git, get it, all of that. And then it uh, gets deployed to dev. The dev environment might be just one node. Again, feedback, 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 just like um, in the previous slide. Here, uh, in the dev environment, the code is deployed to one node. Test cases are run against one node. Everything looks good. It goes to the QA environment, where there might be two or three nodes. Is the code handling it well across the different nodes? Great. And then it goes to QA load. And here, performance test cases and um, load test cases are run. Is everything working fine? No. So this uh, pipeline allows good feedback and, um, and encourages uh, investigation when something goes wrong. So more uh, code review happens, more writing of code, test cases happen. Um, it's merged. It goes into the dev environment, goes into QA, QA load. Great. It passes here. And then it goes into staging. Staging is exactly like production. It is actually a node in the production environment, but closed off from customers. So once it uh, passes in staging, we know that uh, it is going to pass in production, and we deploy to production. And this happens every day. And the good thing about doing a daily deployment uh, pipeline is, unlike in the past when we used to have long sprints, which is about three weeks long, we were like crossing our fingers um, every three weeks, hoping that all the code that we checked in over those three weeks would uh, actually work in production. Uh, but here, the only code that could fail w was the code that was written the day before. So we could actively um, make sure that things work every time we deployed to production. So how was all this possible? It was made possible through a system we built called the Web Application Resource Testing System. And we realized we opened uh, enterprise sourced it to the company, and we realized nobody used it because the name was kind of crappy. So we decided to, as engineers, name it exactly what it is, Python functional tests, PyFunk test. And um, this uh, library of uh, test scripts, allow, I mean, this library of, um, of hypermedia functions uh, allows us to make sure that all the calls that the client would make to our API is well tested. So this is what we call the PyFunk test. And another thing we also built was the third-party API mocking framework. This time we tried another term called Hydra, multiple heads, mocking out different third-party APIs. It worked. People started using it. Um, but like in a previous talk, they mentioned Wiremock. Wiremock is another option we are actively um, looking into because as we try to extend Hydra, we realize that Wiremock does a lot of the things that we wanted to do anyway. Um, also remember that we make sure that all of our testing happens in the uh, mocked up framework, and only a portion of it 
runs against a live environment because um, all the functionality that we are trying to test might not be available to us through the live environment, so we mock it out. And I think some of you might be doing this, the others who are not doing it, come on, you need to get, get on it. Um, another way of uh, making sure that feedback, feedback, feedback is always maintained is uh, we have put together a reporting structure that automatically gets populated as we add more test cases. So on this slide, you'll be able to see on the top left, there is environment equal to test. So this particular report was generated in the uh, developer's local machine. Uh, you can imagine QA, dev, QA, QA load, prod, all coming up there as the same test scripts are run against those environments. Um, in the report, uh, anybody can look at the report and say, oh, you know, there's the accessibility uh, suite of test cases. There are four of them. Uh, what about this, that, and the other? And then the developer or the QA person can go in and start writing more test cases. That get, gets populated through feedback. We have a higher level of uh, testing. So in summary, we maintain sanity at uh, Comcast by having a good code repository system and code review. We do continuous testing and deployment. We use PyFunk test for API functionality testing. And we use Hydra for mocking of third-party APIs. Uh, like I mentioned, Ymock is another good option. And um, I would actively uh, tell you that we are continuing to explore new ways to improving, to improving our testing efforts. Um, I'm going to close out my talk by saying this. Uh, in 2008, I'd come here to you know, be introduced to new testing frameworks. And at Comcast, it, we, were, we were mostly a manual testing shop. And I came here for inspiration and ideas. And um, I was interested to Selenium Grid. I mean, I was not just introduced to it. People are like, duh, Selenium Grid. So I was like, OK, I'm going to go and implement Selenium Grid in the office. I did. I worked on it for almost a year. And, um, and now, six years later, we have improved our testing you know, tenfold. And I would actively um, encourage you guys also to take back all the things you worked here, explore it, see what works for you, and come back and speak at our GTAC conferences in the future. With that, thank you. Thank you, Amit. That's a great success story. Thank you so much. Any questions for Amit? No questions about your Comcast bills, please. <laughs> That's outside this conference. All right. So cool. I guess that's it. Thank you so much.